the AI race between China and the U.S. and what's at stake? Okay, so first of all, uh, China has, has a lot of disadvantages in competing with the U.S. Number one is uh, the fact that they don't get access to all the hardware that we have access to here. Uh, so they're kind of working with lower-end GPUs than us. Uh, it's almost like working with the previous generation GPUs crappily. Uh, so, um, and the fact that the bigger models tend to be more smarter naturally puts them at a disadvantage. But the flip side of this is that necessity is the mother of invention. Um, because they had to go figure out workarounds, they actually ended up building something a lot more efficient. It's like saying, hey, look, you guys really got to get a top-notch model, and I'm not going to give you resources. And they figure out something, right? Unless it's impossible, to, unless it's mathematically possible to prove that uh, it's impossible to do so, you can always try to like come up with something more efficient. But that is likely to make them come up with a more efficient solution than America. And of course, they've open sourced it, so we can still adopt something like that here. But that kind of talent they're building to do that will become an edge for them over time, right? Uh, uh, the leading open source model in America is Meta's Llama family. It's really good. It's kind of like a model that you can run on a computer. Uh, but even though it got pretty close to GPT-4 and uh, Asana at the time of its release, the model that was closest in quality was the giant 405B, not the 70B that you could run on your computer. And so there was still uh, not a small, cheap, fast, efficient open source model that rivaled the most powerful, close models from OpenAI and Anthropic. Nothing from America, uh, nothing from Mistral AI either. And then these guys come out, come out with like a crazy model that's like 10x cheaper in API pricing than GPT-40 and 15x cheaper than Sonnet, I believe. Uh, really fast, 16 tokens per second, 60 tokens per second, and pretty much equal or better in some benchmarks and worse in some others, but like roughly in that ballpark of four O's quality. And they did it all with like approximately just 2048 H800 GPUs, which is actually equal to like somewhere around 1500 or 1500 H100 GPUs. That's like 20 to 30 X lower than the amount of GPUs that um, GPT-4 is usually trained on. And they did, and did roughly $5 million in total uh, compute budget. They did it with so little money and such an amazing model, gave it away for free, wrote a technical paper, and definitely it makes us all question like, okay, like if we have the equivalent of Doge for like model training, uh, this is an example of that, right? Right. Yeah. Efficiency yeah. is what you're getting at. So fraction of the price, yeah. fraction of the time, yeah. dumbed down GPUs essentially. Yeah. What was your surprise when you understood what they had done? So my surprise was that when I actually went through the technical paper, um, the amount of uh, clever solutions they came up with, uh, first of all, they train a mixture of experts model. It's not that easy to train. Uh, there's a lot of like, the main reason people find it difficult to catch up with OpenAI, especially in the MOE architecture, is that uh, there's a lot of uh, irregular loss spikes. Uh, the numerics are not stable. So often like you've got to re restart the training checkpoint again, and a lot of infrastructure needs to be built for that. And they, they came up with very clever solutions to balance that without adding additional hacks. Uh, and uh, they also figured out floating point eight, eight bit training, at least for some of the numerics. And they cleverly figured out which has to be in higher precision, which has to be in lower precision. Uh, and to my knowledge, uh, I think floating point eight training is not that well understood. I think most of the training in America is still running in FP16, maybe OpenAI, and some people are trying to explore that, but it's pretty difficult to get it right. So because necessity is a mother of invention, because they don't have that much memory, that many GPUs, uh, they figured out a lot of numerical stability stuff that makes their training work. and they claimed in the paper that for majority of the training was a stable, which means what? They can always rerun those training runs again and um, on more data or better data. And then uh, it only trained for 60 days. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, Safe so, to say you were surprised. So I was definitely surprised. Usually the uh, wisdom or like, I wouldn't say wisdom, the myth is that Chinese are just good at copying. So if we start stop writing research papers in America, if we stop describing the details of our infrastructure or architecture uh, and, and stop open sourcing, they're not going to be able to catch up. But the reality is some of the details in DeepSeq V3 are so good that I wouldn't be surprised if Meta took a look at it and incorporated some of that in Lama 4. Them. Right? I, I wouldn't necessarily say copy. It's all like you know, sharing science, engineering. But the, but the point is like, it's changing. Like, it's not like China is copycat. They're also innovating. We don't know exactly the data that it was trained on, right? Yeah. Even though it's open source. We know some of the ways yeah. and things it was trained on, but not everything. Correct. And there's this idea that it was trained on public ChatGPT outputs, which would mean it just yeah. was copied, but you're saying it goes beyond that. There's real innovation in yeah, that. Yeah, look, I mean, that's, it, they've trained it on 14.8 trillion tokens. Uh, the internet has so much ChatGPT. If you actually go to any uh, LinkedIn post or X post now, most of the comments are written by AI. You can just see it. 
Like people are just trying to write. In fact, uh, even with an X, there's like a Grok tweet enhancer, or in LinkedIn, there's an AI enhancer, right. or uh, in Google Docs and, 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 and Word, there are AI tools to like rewrite your stuff. So if you do something there and copy paste it somewhere on the internet, it's naturally going to have some elements of uh, a chat GPT like training, right? And there's a lot of people who don't even bother to strip away that I'm a language model right. part. So it, it's based on somewhere and like, it's very difficult to control for this. I think XAI has spoken about this too. So I, I wouldn't like disregard their technical accomplishment just because like for some prompts, like who are you or like which model are you at response like that? It doesn't even matter in my opinion. For a long time, we thought, I don't know if you agreed with us, China was behind yep. in AI. What does this do to that race? Can we say that China is catching up or has it caught up? I mean, like, if we say the matter is catching up to open AI and Anthropic, if you make that claim, then the same claim can be made for China catching up to America. A lot of papers from China that have tried to replicate O1. In fact, I saw more papers from China uh, after O1 announcement that tried to replicate it than from America. Right. Like, and the amount of compute um, DeepSeek has access to is roughly similar to what PhD students in the U.S. have access to. By the way, it, this is not meant to like criticize others. Like, even for ourselves, like you know, I. For perplexity, we decided not to train models because we thought it's like a very expensive thing, yeah. um, and um, we thought like there's no way to catch up with the rest. But Will you incorporate DeepSeek into perplexity? Oh, uh, we already are beginning to use it. Uh, I think they have an API, and we're also they, they have open source of it, so we can host it ourselves too. And it's good to like try to start using that because it actually uh, allows us to do a lot of the things at lower cost. But what I'm kind of thinking is beyond that, which is like okay, if these guys actually could train such a great model with us. You know, good team. Like, and there's no excuse anymore for companies in the U.S., right. including ourselves, to like not try to do something like that. You hear a lot in public from a lot of you know thought leaders in generative AI, both yeah. on the research side, on the entrepreneurial side. Like Elon Musk and others say that China can't catch up. Like, it's the stakes are too big, the geopolitical stakes. Whoever dominates AI is going to kind of dominate the economy, dominate the world. You know, it's been talked about in those massive terms. Are you worried about what China proved it was able to do? Firstly, I don't know if Elon ever said China can catch up. Uh, I'm not aware Just of the threat of China. He's only yeah, yeah. identified the threat of letting China. And, you know, Sam Altman has said similar things. We can't let China win. Yeah, the but, uh, you know, it's all, I, 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 I think you got to decouple what someone like Sam says to, like, what is in his self-interest, right? Uh, look, I, I think really? the, my, my point is, like, whatever you did to not let them catch up didn't even matter. They ended up catching up anyway. Necessity is the mother of invention, exactly. like you said. Exactly. And, and, and you, it's actually... You know what's more dangerous than trying to do all the things to like not let them catch up and, and like you know all, all this stuff is what's more dangerous is they have the best open source model and all the American developers are building on that. Right. That's more dangerous uh, because then uh, they get to uh, own the mind share, the ecosystem. If, if the entire American AI ecosystem, look in general, it's known that once open source is caught up or improved over closed source software. Uh, all developers migrate to that. It's, right. it's historically known, right? When Llama was being built and becoming more widely used, there was this question, should we trust Zuckerberg? But now the question is, should we trust China? That's a very different... You should trust different... open source. That's, that's the... Like, it's not about who... Is it Zuckerberg or is it... Um... Does it matter then if it's Chinese, if it's open source? It, it, look, it, it doesn't matter uh, in the sense that you still have full control. Uh, it's, you run it as your own, like, like um, set of weights on your own computer. You are in charge of the model. But... Um, it's not a great look for our own like talent to like you know rely on software built by others, uh, even if it's open source. Op there's always like a um, point where open source can stop being open source too, right? So the licenses are very favorable today, but you if, could close that exactly if, uh, over time. Uh, they can always change the license, so it's important that we actually have people here in America building, and that's why Meta is so important. Like I, I look, I, I still think Meta will build a better model than DeepSeek V3 and open source it, and what they call it Llama 4 or 3. Point something, doesn't matter. But um, I, I think what is more key is that we we don't like try to uh, focus all our energy on uh, banning them, stopping them, and just try to outcompete and win them. Like that's just that, that's just the American way of doing things. Just, just be better. And it feels like there's you know we hear a lot more about these Chinese companies who are developing in a similar way, a lot more efficiently, a lot more yeah. cost effectively, right? Yeah. Um, Again, like look, uh, it's it's hard to fake scarcity, right? If you uh, raise 10 billion yeah. and you're decided to spend 80% of it on a computer cluster, it's hard for you to come up with the exact same solution that someone with uh, 5 million would do. And, and, and there's no point, of, no need to like sort of berate those who are putting more money on, they're trying to do it as fast as they can. When we say open source, there's so many different versions. Some people criticize Meta yeah. for not publishing everything. And even DeepSeek itself isn't totally transparent. Sure. Yeah, you can go to the limits of open source and say, uh, I should exactly be able to replicate your training run. But first of all, how many people even have the resources to do that. 
um, and compare like like I think the amount of detail they've shared in the technical report. Uh, actually, Meta did that too, by the way. Meta's Llama 3.3 technical report is incredibly detailed and very great for science. Uh, so the amount of details they get, these people are sharing is already a lot more than what the other companies are doing right now. When you think about how much it costs DeepSeek to do this, less than $6 million, think about what OpenAI has spent to yeah. develop GPT models. What does that mean for the closed source model, ecosystem trajectory, momentum? What does it mean for OpenAI? I mean, it's very clear that we'll have like an open source version of 4.0, or even better than that. Uh, and much cheaper than that open source, like completely in this year. Made by OpenAI? Probably not. Most likely not. And I don't think they care if it's not made by them. Uh, I think they've already moved to a new paradigm called the O1 family of models. Um, I think I've looked at, I can't want, like Ilya Sutsky where Kim said, free training is at a wall, mm -hmm. right? So, um, I mean, he didn't exactly use the word, but he clearly said yeah. the age of free training Many is over. I've said that. Right? So, um, that, that doesn't mean scaling is at a wall. I think we're scaling on different dimensions now. The amount of time model spends thinking at test time, reinforcement learning, like trying to like make the model, uh, okay, if it doesn't know what to do for a new prompt, it'll go and reason and collect data and interact with the world, use a bunch of tools. I think that's where things are headed. And I feel like OpenAI is more focused on that right now. Yeah, um, instead of just the bigger, better model of correct. reasoning capacities. But didn't you say that DeepSeek is likely to turn their attention to reasoning? 100%, I think they will. Uh, and that's why I'm pretty excited about what they'll produce next. Uh, I guess that's then my question is sort of what's OpenAI's moat now? Well, I, I still think that um, no one else has produced a system similar to the uh, O1 yet, exactly. Uh, I, I know that like there's debates about whether O1 is actually worth it. Uh, you know, on, on maybe a few prompts, it's really better, but like most of the times it's not producing any differentiated output from Sonnet. But um, at least the results they showed in O3 where uh, they had like competitive coding performance and right. almost like an AI software engineer level. Isn't it just a matter of time, though, before the internet is filled with reasoning data that yeah. deep seek? Again, it's possible. Uh, nobody knows yet. Yeah. Uh, so until it's done, it's still uncertain, right? Right. So maybe that uncertainty is their mode, uh, that like no one else has the same uh, reasoning capability yet. Right. But will, by end of the, this year, will there be multiple players, even in the reasoning arena? I absolutely think so. So are we seeing the commoditization of large language models? I think we'll see models. a similar uh, trajectory, uh, just like how in pre-training and like post-training, that, that sort of system for uh, getting commoditized, um, where this year will be a lot more commoditization there. I think the reasoning kind of models will go through a similar trajectory, where in the beginning, one or two players really know how to do it, but over time, like... That's, and, and who knows, right? Because OpenAI could make another advancement to focus on. Correct. Right now, reasoning is their mode. But, but, but if advancements keep happening again and again and again, like... Uh, I think the meaning of the word advancement also loses some of its value, right? Totally. Even now, it's very difficult, right? Because there's pre-training advancements. Yeah. And then we've moved into a different phase. Yeah, so what, what is guaranteed to happen is whatever models exist today, yeah. um, that level of reasoning, that level of multimodal uh, capability in like 5 to 10x cheaper models, open source, all that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of time. Right. Uh, what is unclear is if something like a model that reasons at test time uh, will be extremely cheap enough that like we can just, just all run it on our phones. I think that's not clear to me yet. It feels like so much of the landscape has changed with what DeepSeek was able to prove. Could you call it China's chat GDT moment? Possible. I mean, um, I think it's only...